Hey everyone and welcome to Comic Breakdown. If you're new to the page, be sure to give us a like and a sub so you don't miss any of the content we have coming out. And today we're going to be diving into Justice League, issue number 53. Now this issue will be a tie-in going into Dark Knight's Death Metal. Now if you guys haven't been checking out Death Metal, I'll be sure to leave a link so you guys can check out everything related to Death Metal currently coming out. It's a really fun series. We see a lot of uh, different versions of Batman that are essentially dark versions and things of that nature. We see a Batman who laughs. We see we see so much going on here. It's really quite enjoyable in my opinion. Some things are a little bit ridiculous, but for the most part, this has been a, a really interesting storyline. And I'm really excited to see where this all takes us for the DC continuity moving forward. And so with that being said, let's dive into this issue. So with this issue, we're met with the Batmobile, and underneath the Batmobile is Robin. Now this is an early version of Dick Grayson, and he's kind of like going against Batman's wishes, not wanting him to tag along and things of that nature to this meeting. Well, upon arriving at this meeting, this is when Dick Grayson, for the first time, sees the Justice League. Sees them in their entirety. He sees all of the heroes. And he knew, you know, from this moment his life would be different. They were different. They were the world's greatest heroes. People that could literally do the impossible. So these are, are literally the people that he looks up to. The ones that he wants to be one day. You know, eventually joining this team of heroes. Doing the impossible. But that was all before the Batman Who Laughs. Before Perpetua, before the world was thrown into chaos and they were locked away on New Apocalypse. Now, him and Hot Girl were tasked with going to Perpetua's throne and freeing the Legion of Doom. Now, by doing this, they would take away some of Perpetua's power, helping the, the, the Holy Trinity, if you will, you know, complete their goal on what they're doing. Now, upon heading towards the throne, they're met with a confrontation going on. And this confrontation is between Bobo the Chimp, the greatest detective, some would say, arguably better than Batman. And he's fighting against a bunch of, uh, of pretty much perpetual lackeys. And this is where Nightwing makes his arrival. Riding Comet, which was gifted to him by, by Wonder Woman. The horse that was forged in the fires of Themyscira. Literally the fastest horse in any world. And at first, Bobo the Chimp's like, you know, I, I, I don't need any help from the Justice League. Like, get out of here. But obviously, Nightwing doesn't adhere to that. And him and Hot Girl jump in and just start laying waste to everybody that was challenging Bobo. And we really see that these two ha have become a, a good unit when it comes to combating the enemy. These two are, are really in sync. They know what they're doing together. And it's really awesome to see. And they, you know, they take out everybody and then they let Bobo the Chimp know, like, we're here to find you. Like, we heard what happened to you and your team. You know, they kept fighting. When, when most of the heroes were locked away on New Apocalypse, those that remained tried to fight back as much as they could. And Hot Girl lets Bobo know, like, the heroes are rising up against the Batman who laughs. You know, we were trapped at one point, but now we're free. And we're on a mission right now to get to Perpetua's throne to free the Legion of Doom. And Bobo the Chimp's really lost a lot of hope. Like, he, he's at the point where he's saying, like, you need to accept that this is the way the world is. This is what we're living in. It's not going to change. This is how it will be forever. But eventually they're able to persuade Bobo the Chimp to help them out. And as they're headed there, we, we learn, you know, Dick Grayson's lost quite a bit of his memory. Or well, at least he had. And now that he's starting to get his memory back, you know, the world's gone crazy. And he's, tr he's still trying to struggle to be the man he was before. To be Nightwing. And that's one reason why he volunteered for this mission. To free the Legion. To try to, to bring back who he was, the person he once was, trying to find that hero again. And then we arrive at the Hall of Justice. And Bobo says that there's got to be a trail left behind here because this is where it all started. This is where, where the Justice League lost, you know, so we have to be able to, to map it. You know, and at the end of the day, humanity chose Perpetua. They chose to side with Doom. And as they venture further into the, the, the Hall of Justice, Bobo's asking Hot Girl, like, hey, I heard that, you know, Martian Manhunter and you were an item at one point. Where is he right now? And they tell Bobo, like, 
Martian Manhunter was with us on New Apocalypse, but he took off without, you know, really saying a word. But they, they really do trust what he's doing because if he's out there doing something important or if he just took off, it has to be something of, of importance. And then as they venture just a little bit further in, they, they find out that Bobo the Chimp was actually leading them to Lex Luthor. And immediately Hot Girl goes to attack. And just yelling at him like this is his fault. This is because of him. And Lex Luthor's pretty much like let her come. Like I understand what I did. My actions. I accept her vengeance. But if you want vengeance on me, it's gonna come at a cost. And and they they really are just like you know Bobo. Why did you bring us here? Like why did you bring us to Lex Luthor? And Lex Luthor interjects and says you know. It's because I've seen the error of my ways. I, I see through my own obsession with totality and, and the path that led us down this ruins. Like, it was my quest for more power. And he's trying to say, like, I changed myself. I became, you know, Apex. I, I merged with Martian Manhunter for Perpetua. Even after she'd imprisoned the Legion of Doom, I still stood by her side. But then Perpetua rejected him. Chose the Batman who laughs over him. And after being cast down, he witnessed the world transform. And he studied everything that was remade by the Batman Who Laughs. He learned about Perpetua's throne, you know, the, the people still trapped in it, Sinestro, Cheetah, and Grodd. And he knew it was hidden somewhere on Earth. And to be more precise, it's at Brimstone Bay. And so he's trying to reverse what he's done. He's, he's trying to change the course of history because of his actions. And they're like, all right, well, we, you know, we have the information we want. We don't really need to bring you along, Lex Luthor, so see you later, guy. And he lets them know, like, yeah, you may know the location, but there's one thing that you don't know about. You know, you think you're the first to try to go and free them? Another... Uh, uh, another hero had ventured out to Perpetua's throne before you, and he was just as unprepared. You know, the, the Omega Titans died when the Source Wall fell, but Perpetua has something up her sleeve still. She, she resurrected her former jailer's remains from the Dark Multiverse, and she created her own Omega Knight. A Frankenstein-like Frankenstein monster that keeps watch over the Legion of Doom and, and protects her seat of power while she destroys the multiverse. And Martian Manhunter went to go confront this thing on his own. And so Lex lets them know, like, if you want to destroy Perpetua's seat, like, we need to go right now. Because Martian Manhunter doesn't have much time before he's going to be taking out. And, and they really want to keep, keep pressing forward without Lex Luthor still. And he, he tells them one last thing. He's like, you know what? Go alone if you would like. But even if you get past the Omega Knight, there is something even more powerful that stands in your way. The Batman who laughs sent one, one of the, the his most terrifying to protect this throne because that is how important this throne is and this is when we see mine hunter the batman martian man hunter combination and he's going against martian man hunter and that will be where this issue ends let me know what you guys think this is really the story you know one of the stories i've been waiting for like a little bit of a tie-in to see one of these you know really awesome batman that, that have been shown in the other comics, but not really given much of a role. Now, in this, we're going to be seeing Martian Manhunter versus Mindhunter. Like, this is the ultimate showdown. And, and only hoping that Nightwing and Hawkgirl can get there in time to be able to lend a hand. Because Martian Manhunter on his own is not going to be able to take Mindhunter. Like, this is a... a a Batman Martian Manhunter mix who took out the whole Justice League on his own planet in his own little dark universe. So it only goes to say that Martian Manhunter alone cannot take on this fight. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. You know, who do you think is going to win this fight? How do you think it's going to play out? Are they going to make it to Perpetua's throne? Are they going to get help from Sinestro later on? Like, I'm really excited to see where this goes, and seeing almost a Ronin-type Dick Grayson Nightwing is really unique, and I, I really like it. It's very, you know, post-apocalyptic post Nightwing, and I dig it. But yeah, if you guys haven't yet, be sure to like and subscribe to the page, and until the next video.